In this lecture, we review some basic high school math concepts that you'll find that you'll need in our statistics course. Before we get to the binomial distribution, we have to take a slight digression and a review of permutations and combinations. A permutation is an arrangement. So for example, I ask you, how many ways can you arrange the letters A, B, and C? Note that A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A have six different permutations of the letters A, B, and C. Of course, they all have the same, in quotes, combination. They all have A, B, and C in, in them. But as a permutation, since it's arranged differently, A, B, C is not C, B, A. It's a different arrangement. So we're going to learn how to do a permutation. This is a formula for that. Well, we have three letters, A, B, and C. We want to know how many ways, how many permutations you have. Well, we have to know how many slots you have, positions. All right, so we're going to define N, how many objects. We have A, B, and C. And we have R, the number of slots. So in slot number one, we can put an A, B, or C in. In slot two, once you start with, let's say in slot one you have an A, there's only two things left for slot two. So we start with A, you've got B, C, B, or C. And then, of course, there's only one thing left for slot three. So if you start with an A, and then you put a B in slot two, then in slot three, all you're left with is a C. Now, let's say you start in slot one, you start with a B. Right? In slot two, you've got a choice, A or C. And let's say you have B, then A, then you were stuck. In slot three, you've got only one. So again, in slot one, we have three letters to choose from, A, B, or C. In slot two, you're only going to have two letters left. And finally, in slot three, you only have one unused letter. Notice it's three times two times one. That's how we got the six. And you can see the six different permutations, A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. When you do this in your calculator, you'll see a key that has N, P, R. The P stands for permutations. Usually it's together with the N, C, R key. One will be the first function, one will be the second function. So both be on your calculator. You'll see N, P, R and N, C, R. It's got to be a scientific calculator. So P stands for permutation. N is the number of distinct objects you want to arrange. And R is the number of slots or spaces, if you wish. So in the previous example, we started with A, B, C. We had three objects, A, B, C. We want to put them into three slots. On your calculator, that would be three, permutation three, three, P, three. And if you play with it in your calculator, you'll see it's six. Three, P, three is six. The general formula for permutation, you want to do it by formula, not by calculator. N, P, R is N factorial over N minus R factorial. Okay? Now, what does factorial mean? So 10 factorial means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Notice it's a huge number. All right? 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which actually is 720. Always remember 0 factorial is 1. Okay? So now, so NPR is N factorial over N minus R factorial. Of course, when n equals r, the npm becomes n factorial over n minus n, which is 0 factorial, which is 1. So npn is simply just n factorial. Okay, so this is the formula that you're going to use if you want to use a formula. So npr is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And remember that if r equals n, then you're just looking at n factorial over 1, or just n factorial. Let's look at some problems that involve permutations. How many ways can you assign five workers to five different tasks? Well, n is five, you have five workers. The tasks are your slots, okay? So you have five, p, five. Well, here's where n equals r, so it's five factorial over, if you want, over zero factorial, which is one, so, or just five factorial, which is five times four times three times two times one, and that's 120. 
There are 120 ways you can do this. How many ways, example two, how many ways can you arrange 10 different books in your bookcase, and you have a bookcase, a small one, has room for exactly five books? Well, that's 10, n is 10, 10 books, but you only have five slots, so 10 p 5, and that works out to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, works out to 30,240. Really, you should do this in your calculator. It's just 10 p 5. How many ways can eight cars line up single file in front of a toll booth? Well, again, here we have eight cars, n is eight, but we have eight slots. There are eight positions for these cars. So it's 8 p 8, which is 8 factorial, which is 40,320. Here's another one. How many ways can you arrange 12 guests around the table that has 12 chairs? The chairs are like slots. Well, you have 12 guests, and you have tw uh, 12 P12, or 12 factorial ways of arranging them. And that works out to 479,600,000. And as we note, this is why you get lots of fights in families with weddings and seating arrangements because they say something like, you know, Jane will argue, why'd you seat me near John? You know, I don't like John. You know, these are, a, a, it's a permutation problem. And every table, and you can have uh, 12 tables if there's an issue. With permutations, the arrangement is important. Each unique sequence is another permutation. As I mentioned, ABC is not the same as DCA, and they're both different from CBA. It's like the thing we had of the seating plan. John near Jane is not the same as putting Jane near near John uh, near somebody else. You know, each one's a different arrangement. With combinations, on the other hand, ABC, BCA, CBA, it's all the same thing. We all have the same combination of A, of A, B, and C in them. So, for example, I ask you, how many different groups of three can be selected from seven people? So we're going to call these people A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We have seven people, and we want to how many different groups of three. Of course, once you select B, D, and E, the six different ways you can arrange B, D, and E is irrelevant. It's still B, D, and E. Here's the kind of with cards, of course. That you, have, you have a hand of five cards and you have four aces. Nobody cares how they're arranged. You can say, I've got four aces in my hand. On your calculator, you'll see NCR is basically NPR, but you've got to shrink it, reduce it by R factorial. So the formula for NCR, N combination R, N objects, R slots, NCR is N factorial, over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Again, use your calculator. That's the best way to do this. So in the previous problem, we had how many groups of three can be selected from seven people? That's seven combination three. Well, if you do it in your calculator, you get the answer of 35. If you want to do it by hand, it's seven factorial over three factorial times four factorial. A little trick. In the denominator, the two numbers always add up to the numerator. It's got to add up to n. So when you see three and four, you know it adds up to seven. So you know you got it. You probably got it right. Okay. So just use your NCR key once you recognize that a problem is a combination problem. If it's a permutation problem, you got to use the NPR key for a combination problem and NCR key. Look at this problem. Example one, how many different hands can one draw from a deck of 52 cards? That's a typical deck. And you're playing seven card Rami. So how many hands of seven? Now remember, this is a combination. Because we don't really care the, about the, how it comes in. We just want to know how many different hands can you get. Well, 52 combination seven. Notice it's 52 factorial over seven factorial times 45 factorial. Again, seven and 45 is 52. See so you know, how you got it right. Well, 50, uh, 52 combination 7 is this huge number, 133,784,560. That's your answer. Example 2. How many samples of size n equals 6 can be drawn from a population of size capital N equals 50? Notice we're using small n for the sample. The population now, capital N is 50. Well, that's 50 combination 6. And notice how large that is, 15,890,700. Quite a few different possible samples that you can get. 
In fact, samples in general should be seen as a, as a combination situation, a combination problem.